We all want to be successful in life. It's a natural human trait. The challenge, of course, is finding the golden formula. Last week, we met the remarkable Dr. Ben Carson, the most celebrated pediatric neurosurgeon in the world. In the first of our two-part series, he shared his amazing life story with us, telling how he transformed himself from an upbringing amid abject poverty in a tough inner city ghetto. Once seen as the dumbest kid in his class at school, subjected to constant bullying and taunts, handicapped by a violent and uncontrollable temper, and raised by a single mother who could barely read and write herself. Dr. Ben Carson's story of ultimate success and triumph is amazing and inspirational. It's surely one of the most remarkable stories ever of a life of failure transformed to overwhelming success. Today, we're again honored to have Dr. Ben Carson on our It Is Written program to share the second part of his remarkable story with us. I know you're going to be inspired as he spells out his philosophies for living and shares the secrets of his success. It has stood the test of time. God's book, the Bible, still relevant in today's complex world. It is written, sharing hope around the globe. Last week, in part one of the Ben Carson story, we learned that he was born in Detroit, Michigan. His parents were divorced when he was only eight years old. And he and his older brother were raised by his mother, Sonia, a remarkable woman with a limited education herself, who worked two and sometimes three jobs to raise her two young sons. She never felt sorry for herself. And that was a good thing. She never felt sorry for us either. That was a bad thing. But, uh, you know, she would never accept excuses. She was also a person who, who felt that you could always change something if you didn't like it. And, uh, and, and really, there's something to be taken out of that story, I think, for a lot of parents, recognizing that sometimes you, you have to lay down the law. You know, the reason that you're the parent is because supposedly you've lived life already and you have some wisdom and you know a little bit about how things should work. So kids can express themselves up to a certain degree, but they need real guidance. Ben Carson's early school days were not promising. Always at the bottom of his class, he was subjected to humiliation and bullying. No one had to worry in my class about getting the lowest mark on a test as long as I was there. So it gave them some relief. <laughs> but uh, you know, my classmates called me dummy. Uh, they made fun of me. The teachers really didn't expect much of me. And quite honestly, I didn't expect much of myself. Ben's life was gradually turned around by a tough love approach from his mother. The key was learning to love books and reading. Once I started reading the books and I started knowing things that no one else knew, I began to form a completely different picture of myself. And I got to the place where I couldn't wait to get home to read my books. And uh, I got to the point where my mother, who was always after me to read, was saying, Benjamin, put the book down. <laughs> With the knowledge and confidence Ben gained from books, his life began to change. His school grades improved, and bit by bit, Ben climbed from the bottom of his class to become an outstanding student. Through dedication and hard work, Ben eventually won a scholarship to the prestigious Yale University, where he initially earned a psychology degree before switching to neurosurgery. I thought that I was going to be a psychiatrist, and I believe that God gives everybody special gifts and talents. And I realized I had a lot of eye-hand coordination, the ability to think in three dimensions. I was a very careful person. I never knocked things over and said, oops. <laughs> which is a great characteristic for a brain surgeon, by the way. And I kind of put all that together with my love of the brain, and I said, you would be a terrific brain surgeon. Today, Dr. Ben Carson is considered to be the world's leading pediatric neurosurgeon. What are the keys to the amazing turnaround in this man's life? What are the secrets of his incredible success? Through his years of struggling to succeed, he developed strong principles and methods that he followed and applied to achieve his goals. 
These are the secrets of his success. These are the principles and the methods Dr. Carson built his own successful life and career on. And they can work for anyone. They can work for you. But stay tuned because I'm now going to share with you a summary of these secrets from Dr. Carson's best-selling book titled, Think Big, Unleashing Your Potential for Excellence. You'll discover that these secrets aren't really secrets at all. They're common sense advice and guides that are easy to understand and very simple to apply to your own situation. In fact, they're so easy to follow, you can start using them immediately. Listen carefully as we go through these principles one by one. What you're about to learn could change your life forever. Can you summarize the secrets of your own success for us? Uh, I can really quite easily uh, with the acrostic Think Big. Each one of those letters means something special. The T is for talent, which God gave to every single person. And when I talk about talent, I'm not just talking about singing and dancing and throwing a ball, but intellectual talent. We were made in the image of God. We have these gigantic frontal lobes. Uh, and we need to begin to use those things. And uh, when we see young people, we need to encourage them and we need to challenge them. Dr. Carson tells us that T equals talent. He tells us that to achieve success, we must first recognize what we are truly good at in life, to identify our own God-given talents and to focus and concentrate our efforts in that direction. To help you identify your talents, he suggests you spend several sessions in peaceful, quiet surroundings, concentrating on finding the answers to questions like, what have I done well in my life? In what school subjects did I do well? What do I like doing that other people have complimented me on? And what do I enjoy doing that other people think is boring? Also, talk to friends, workmates, family. Ask others what they think you're good at doing. Everyone is good at doing at least one thing very well. The first secret of success is to identify what it is that you do well and enjoy doing. The second secret of success begins with the letter H for honesty. When we act dishonestly, we cheat ourselves. Most people have an uncanny ability to detect dishonesty in others. Maybe it's because dishonest people often display unusual body language or subtle but odd behavior that others pick up on. Whatever it is, dishonest people get found out. They're not trusted, they're not liked, they're avoided. Dr. Carson stresses the importance of being honest in all things, to always tell the truth. Honesty is a major key to success in life. If we're honest, people will be honest in return. And if we are honest with ourselves and accept our problems and own shortcomings, we can achieve much more. You lead a clean and honest life, you won't put skeletons in the closet because if you put them there, they will come out at the most inopportune time. And if you always tell the truth, you don't have to try to remember what you said three months ago. And you can concentrate on a task at hand. The next secret to success begins with the letter I. This time, the letter I equals insight. Another word for insight is understanding. Dr. Carson emphasizes the importance of thinking things through clearly. He urges us to listen to people who are successful, to learn new and positive things from everywhere and everyone. We should learn from the mistakes of others as well as from their achievements. You'll find that the majority of successful people will share their experiences, good and bad, with you. You can learn so much by gaining insights through the eyes of others. Dr. Carson tells us we must observe and reflect on what good people do, then commit ourselves to giving our best. If we do, we'll come out on top. The I is for insight, which comes from listening to people who've already gone where you're trying to go. You can learn from their triumphs, you can learn from their mistakes. If you don't have to make the same mistakes your parents made, or your aunts and uncles, or your teachers, or other people, then think how much faster you can go. And if you can look at the good things they did and emulate those, 
you're going to be on the right track. Now the letter N, which Dr. Carson tells us equals nice. He tells us that we must avoid prejudice, that we must not judge books by their covers. He stresses that we must go through our lives treating others with respect and consideration. Because when we face the world with a positive and friendly disposition, it influences everyone we come in contact with in positive ways. That's because people like and admire people who are friendly, happy, and just plain nice. The fact is that when we are nice to others, they'll almost always respond to us in the same way. So always be prepared to share a smile and show an interest. Be known as someone who cares about others. Be sincere, be interested, be genuine. Treat everyone as equals. Do not bow to important people and ignore the less fortunate. You'll be amazed at how much the world loves sincere, cheerful and thoughtful people and surprised at how success comes so much faster and more readily to those who are truly nice to others. Be nice to people because once they get over their suspicion of why you're being nice, they'll be nice to you. You can get so much more done. They can get so much more done. Your life becomes so much more pleasant. And really, you know, that's what a Christian lifestyle calls for, treating other people the way you want to be treated and not being selfish and uh, thinking about others first. And it's actually kind of fun. It doesn't sound like fun in the beginning, but just give it a try and you'll see it is a wonderful thing. The last secret from the word think starts with the letter K. It stands for knowledge. The human brain contains 14 billion cells. If used to its maximum, this divinely created human computer inside our heads could contain all the knowledge of humanity from the beginning of the world to the present and still have room left over. The fact is, we cannot overload the human brain. Dr. Carson tells us that all knowledge is important. He urges us to seek knowledge because knowledge overcomes the past. It changes our own situations. It helps us overcome new obstacles and it allows us to make better decisions. Remember, knowledge is power. And if we make every attempt to increase our knowledge in order to use that knowledge for human good, it'll make a real difference in us and in our world. Uh, do I have a big house? Yes. Do I have a lot of cars? Yes. A lot of things that Robin Leach of Lifestyles or the rich and famous things are important. Of course I do. Are they important? No, they mean nothing. If they all disappeared tomorrow, I don't care because I can get them all right back almost immediately. But what's up here? Which is what Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, meant when he said, gold, silver, and rubies are nice, but be treasured far above those things. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, because with those things, you get all the gold and silver and rubies you want. It. More importantly, you come to understand they don't amount to a hill of beans, and that the most important thing is developing your intellect so that you become valuable to the people around you. That's lasting value. Now we move on to the acrostic from the word big. First, the letter B for books. Books have been a major factor in Dr. Carson's own success. From the time as a youngster, when his mother limited his television viewing to only two favorite programs a week and set him the task of reading two books and writing a report on both every week, books were the true turning point in his life. Books became his way out of the ghetto, his escape from poverty, his ticket to gaining self-esteem, confidence and a brilliant future. When Dr. Carson speaks of books, he echoes the words of William Ellery Channing. In the best books, great men talk to us, give us their most precious thoughts and pour their soul into ours. God be thanked for books. They are the voices of the distant and the dead and make us heirs of the spiritual life of past ages. Books are true levelers. They give to all who will faithfully use them the society, the spiritual presence of the best and greatest of our race. Dr. Carson firmly believes that even in this age of the internet and powerful search engines, books are still the best source of acquiring knowledge. Reading activates and exercises the mind. Reading forces the mind to discriminate. From the beginning, 
Readers have to recognise letters printed on the page, make them into words, the words into sentences, and the sentences into concepts. Reading pushes us to use our imagination and makes us more creative. When we commit ourselves to books and increasing our knowledge, it seems there are few limits to how far we will go in this world. It's never too late. My mother did teach herself to read, got her GED, her graduate equivalency diploma, went on to college, got an honorary doctorate degree in 1994, so she's Dr. Parson now too. <laughs> Next, the second letter I, this time from the word big. This time, Dr. Carson tells us that I equals in-depth knowledge. We can never learn or know too much. We must never stop gaining knowledge. But more importantly, we must gain deep knowledge. It's not enough to have superficial and shallow knowledge. We must dig deeply to gain substantial understanding and insights. When we search for knowledge, we develop an inquiring mind. We can gain knowledge through formal education, through reading widely on a given subject, and through observation. We must learn from others. We must ask more questions. We must never stop questioning. We must apply ourselves to continue learning and inquiring knowledge throughout our lives. In-depth knowledge allows us to give our best to others and make a better world. Superficial learners are people who cram a lot of stuff in before a test, sometimes do okay and three weeks later know nothing. Uh, I don't think that's really paying uh, the appropriate respect to our Creator and the intellect that He gave it. He didn't give it to us so that we could just take a test. He gave it to us so that we could become in-depth learners and use that knowledge to advance ourselves and to advance mankind. For Dr. Carson, the letter G gives us the perfect final word when it comes to achieving success in life. For G equals God. You know, we live in a politically correct society that is trying to get God out. You know, people don't even want to say Merry Christmas anymore because somebody might be offended. Just crazy stuff. And, you know, the fact of the matter is, you know, when you look and a lot of incredibly talented intellectual people like Albert Einstein, who was a believer in God, because when he looked at the universe, he said, this couldn't just come about. Now you look at Francis Collins, the Human Genome Project, who was an atheist when he started his graduate work. And as he began to understand the complexity of the human genome, he said, oh, sorry, this can't be an accident. Uh, but also, you look at godly principles of loving your fellow man, of caring about your neighbor, of developing your talents to the utmost so that you become valuable to others, of having values and principles that govern your life. And if you incorporate those into your life, you're going to be highly successful. Dr. Carson has committed his life to God. He acknowledges God as the most significant key to his success in life just like Solomon did in Bible times. Notice what it says here in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. Throughout his life and career, God has helped Dr. Carson through many crises. By acknowledging God as both a powerful and loving force in the world, we become more considerate of others. We understand that we must treat other human beings the way we want to be treated. From this we learn humility. Humility isn't groveling and telling others how worthless we are. Humility is knowing who we are and what God is doing and has done in our lives. And this basic understanding of who we are in relationship with God, enables us to keep everything in perspective. It keeps our feet on the ground. It is the solid foundation on which a successful life can be built. And unless we are humble in the sight of God, unless we are grateful for any success that comes our way, we will not achieve true and lasting success in anything. Listen to what the Bible says in James chapter 4 and verse 6. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. 
Dr. Carson advocates a relationship with God by a simple philosophy. Do your best and let God do the rest. A good friend of mine, a man who is very successful in business, once told me that it doesn't matter where we start in life, the only thing that counts is where we finish. I cherish those words and that thought. No matter how humble our beginnings, each and every one of us has the chance, the opportunity, the possibility of turning our life around and becoming a success. And it doesn't matter at what point in our life we set out to become more successful. God wants us to be successful. God wants us to be the best we can be. Please join me now as we pray. Dear Father, thank you for giving us so much wisdom on how to find happiness and success from people such as Dr. Carson. Thank you also for the Bible, which was the source of Dr. Carson's secrets. Please help us put these secrets into practice in our own lives and may they bring blessing and happiness to others as we seek the success that you want us to have. In Jesus' name, Amen. Until next week, remember, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God.